Well, the growing issues bedeviling the country and problems almost breaking the fabric of the nation, the question on the minds of many Nigerians will these challenges further divide us or rather strengthen us as a people? It will be said that never in the country's history have we been so divided on the ethnic and political lines than we are now. But should that be the case with doubting challenges facing us? Will it not further put more of a problem? And if so, what can be done to strengthen the bond that binds us together as a people? And it's been said that the best way to strengthen a nation is if the youth are made to see that they are one. And in that togetherness, the problem confronting us can collectively be addressed. And that is what this edition of the big story is all centered on. And we're talking about youth togetherness and confronting some of the major challenges affecting them. And we're talking, that's what we're having as a major discourse today on the big story. And we're talking about youth togetherness in confronting some of the basic challenges that uh, all are affecting us. You totally agree with me. Uh, the courts across the country, uh, we seem to be faced with a whole lot of mountain challenges. And how better we can collectively combine together to address them would indeed uh, resolve or solve the problem. But anyway, that's what we're having as a major one. As we try to also look, it's only good we come home and uh, look at some of the problems that seem to also be confronting uh, young Deltans. And we'll be looking at that. But how or who better to bring in a youth to help look at the issues in that perspective rather than bringing in no other but uh, uh, the president of the Isoko Youth Assembly. And I'm talking about comrade Aniwake. I hope I'm right. Eniwake. Eniwake Orogun. Uh, good morning and welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Good I, I, I want also first, I, I really do want to first ask you, do, do you feel we are indeed on a crossroad as it concerns different problems confronting us? And are, are we so divided on ethnic and political lines than we've ever been before? Because let's look at all the problems that seems to be facing us as people. And I want your reactions to that, at least as a guide into our discussion. Once again, thank you for having us, uh, having me here this morning. Good morning, viewers. Um, yes, because of the many challenges yes. and um, uh, bedeviling us as a people and as a nation, mm. um, you can easily tell that there's been this divide among us, um, regional divides, ethnic divides, uh, because of sentiments that have uh, been wiped up, wiped up over the years, okay. especially uh, the major culprits uh, are political class. You know, um, division, ethnic division, religious um, sentiments have yeah. been used as a tool, have been weaponized yeah. over the years as a tool for political discourse and campaigns. Yeah. And um, what we now witness, what we now see, uh, we now uh, we now see uh, regional idols, regional yeah. warlords, as it yeah. were, yeah. where those we look up to, yeah. who should naturally be um, speaking or acting in the interest of the nation, yeah. are now looking at the interest of a region or of a people. And many times, um, in trying to have this discussion, you you find a lot of people who have deviated from the nationalistic tendency okay. you know trying to rise up in defense mm -hmm. of their people for mm -hmm. example if you look at the leadership of uh, the past administration mm -hmm. uh, of the Buhari led administration, administration yeah. at the time where different issues were cropping up when people were making noise when people were talking about uh, uh, appointments mm -hmm. being uh, sectionalized yes, guilty, marginalized guilty, marginalized and all of that you find voices from the other side saying that no it's our turn when it's mm. your turn you do this when mm. it's so uh, this leads to division but I, I don't think Nigerians generally are even more concerned about who is who at the point what they want is they want food on their table yeah. they want basic amenities they want mm. um, things that will improve their daily lives and welfare and then um, when they begin to talk in this light um, instead of a general consensus, instead of a general agreement mm. that there is a problem we must deal with, mm. uh, people tend to look at it from religious, yeah. from regional right. prison. Yeah. And so um, and when you speak the truth, it is seen as an attack mm. to, uh, to the authorities. To the authority, 
that came from the other side. Mm -hmm. If we want to look at the northern part, we want to look at the southern part. And so these are the issues that um, we, we, we face um, as a people here. Okay, now I'll, I'll, I'll still continue on that line because you, you said it. And, and you feel the older guns, forgive me for calling them that, have always used that as a tool to further divide us for their own personal gain, if true. that's the case. Uh, but, but, but don't you feel the youth are also culpable in this? And the reason I ask, even during the elections, yes, it's the youth they use in perpetrating most of their wishes. And even after the elections, we see, see many young persons hailing these people to the high heavens, even when they do not perform. So should we just put the blame squarely on the tables of the older guns or older politicians, or should the youth also take a chunk of the blame? Um, yes, it, it's uh, it's something that we can we will spread. Okay. But um, the majority of the blame should go to the older guns. Okay. I'll tell you why. Mm. Um, the youths, you want to talk about their economic power to mm. be able to resist um, whatever um, carrots that is thrown at them. Yeah. Um, first. A lot of them, they told us initially, go to school, go to school, go to school. Now, a lot of them have gone to school. They are out, no jobs. Uh, well over 30, well over 25, looking at their old parents who may, many, or um, a lot of them are retirees. Yeah. Uh, no funding for the home, for their personal lifestyle. Then election is here. Mm. And um, the, our fathers, the older guns yeah. now, you throw a millionaire or some uh, far less figure go at these youths uh, who will see it as oh this is enough for me to yeah. si to survive for the yeah. next one month or next two months and uh, it really so it's not like using resist. using poverty as a weapon exactly it to is get a weapon. their interest from using the poverty young using um, uh, lack of education and exposure to get um, to get so uh, and again again you you now see this um, sentiment too religious and ethnic yeah, sentiment yeah. these are the things that have issues that have been weaponized um, so the youths um, before you now start talking about the youth how well they they should be able yeah. to resist this temptation these um, issues. You want to look at their economic power, like I said. Um, how many of them can feed themselves? Uh, so at least they so won't be readily used tools in the hands of these. Yes, old. but but the, it is changing because in the last election, you you saw the the participation yes. of the youths, yes. especially Massively. at the presidential level, yeah. Yeah. where we wanted a change, and that trickled down to yeah. all levels where yeah. we wanted a change, and the youths made a statement. It is an improvement from what has been, and uh, you can be rest assured that with these challenges that we are now seeing, it will only spur the youth again to even yeah. come together and see how we can kick off um, these, these old guys. A lot of them. Yeah. You see, another reason why they try to weaponize these issues are um, they, they, a, a lot of them don't have other address other than their political terrain hmm. and so they are, they are really scared well, of it's a statement yeah they are really scared of losing losing out because um, a lot of them politics for them is their occupation their lifestyle and when they are makes out them of relevant it, makes them of relevant that. when they are out of it uh, they so they fear they fear to be out and therefore they want to use every means and ways to perpetuate themselves in power including um, weaponizing Poverty, including weaponizing ignorance, including weaponizing religious sentiments. Uh, you know, and, and sometimes you even look at the religious sentiment. It, it's not a Christian uh, Islam thing issue. issue. Mm -hmm. Even among uh, Christian bodies, you now hear it's from this place, mm -hmm. it's from this More place. Denomination, you break denomination it down. Denomination and all of that. So it is an issue, really. It is an issue. But um, the good part of it is that the youths are. They're coming together. The last time I can tell you, there are far more that came together yeah, yeah. than those that were um, outside. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, uh, it, it, it would be improper if we talk or have a discussion without really coming home. Yeah. That, that will not be fair. Yeah. And so, so let, let, let's come home and come to Delta State. And uh, you, you've been the forefront of pushing for that youth togetherness. Yeah championing the cause of young deltans exactly uh, as it's the case may be but 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 uh, well I'm, I'm not trying to make it between the old guns and the young ones but but there's this feeling uh from some quarters that feel are you sure we have young deltans that can take the charge take the lead 
change the narrative as it is now and that that question it's not far-fetched and that the reason that question is not far-fetched if you look at some of the crime being perpetrated they are being perpetrated by young deltans in delta state so the question is do we have capable delton youths that can change the narrative oh yes the question we, 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 oh yes we have um plenty I, I am one of them okay well anyway, <laughs> and, speak for yourself and there are several <laughs> several others out there that can change the narrative you see um in delta state we we, we are fortunate to be in that region where you say there are a lot of enlightened youths yeah. um i graduated from the university of benin okay. and in that place we had so many youths so many youths in different professions you know and uh, we, we've also we had those discussion yeah. I was a student in your government president University of Benin okay and then um, even the kind of politics we played there mm. we had so many youths who have now um, transitioned from that level mm. and into the secular um, politics so yeah. we have a lot of you know th there are two fears here mm. fear one fear number one is that um, some of these youths who were not seen, who, who were, were tipping, mm. have really been under the tutelage of the mm. old guns. Mm. And so, um, how are we so convinced that, that they will they not pick some elements different. from these guys? Yeah. You yeah. Know? But the truth is, um, they've seen what it is. Mm. They've seen what the actions and inactions of the old guns has uh, caused, where we are right now. And they owe a responsibility to the next generation not to pass this on. And so a lot of, a lot of youths have made up their minds to so do. Um, that is where you want to give credit you know, to the current administration of Governor um, Sheriff uh, uh, Oboruri. Uh, because of the youth inclusion and inclusiveness in government, uh, in yeah. government. Yeah. on our part you see a young person a young mm. uh, young guy like um, uh, the honorable commissioner for transportation for transportation the yeah. honorable Honor commissioner Honor. for um for health yeah. joseph onojame yeah. uh, you see so many um youth inclusion mm. these are people that have uh, uh, you know that 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 knows that, that, that know what to do mm. and really have the intention to. So the, 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 the fear there, like I mentioned, the first one is um, if they'll be able to extricate themselves from, from the actions, the actions and, and inactions, inactions of, of the, older. Um, the older ones. Mm. And even beyond those that are in government, mm. there are so, so many more of those who, because the truth is, we, we have seen that the challenge has always been lack of economic power on the part mm -hmm. of the youths. Mm -hmm. And that's why they, they try to hold on anything that comes from uh, you know, the table of uh, the other guns. But today, that is changing. There are so many youths who can hold their thoughts. Mm -hmm. There are so many youths who can uh, stay on their own and say, I don't care what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I don't need your 500000 I don't need your money. I can feed myself. I can feed my family. So I'll take my and decision. And so I'll take my decision. And, my and so many independent-minded youths are rising up. And I'm one of them. So I can tell you, I know for sure what we're saying. Mm -hmm. um, um, I mean, a lot of youths are ready to take. Look at the various billboards mm -hmm. around the state, those that are... Uh, that that have now vying for local have the, yes, yes the audacity to vie for local government uh, chairmanship you see a lot of young people under 30s or under 40s it just tells you that the 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 baton is already changing hands and they were very very ready to to, to run well, uh, uh, quite elaborate but in case you're joining us is quest today and uh, we're looking about uh, youth togetherness and uh, we're looking at the huge challenge uh, that seems to be bedeviling us as a people. D do we have young Nigerians that can truly, like he said, uh, take the baton or take over the baton and, and do far more better uh, than what we've been experienced? Everybody will truly agree that if everything goes south, uh, the youths are the ones that will lose the most. But how can they also change the narrative? How can that togetherness, especially looking at the huge challenges that seems to be confronting us, uh, be done? And that's why we're looking or having this as a major one. But let, let's quickly come back to you. Yes, uh, we, we brought it down to Delta State. And I'm still going to bring it down. And I bring it down to also knowing that you're the president of the Isoko Youth. Uh, 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 let's look at the terrain. Yes, Isoko uh, is a vibrant, educated, and thriving um, ethnic nationality in Delta State. And uh, yeah, we do know there have been issues as it concerns recessiveness under that region for a while. And um, when we had the issue of the Uzora and Oli and all of that. But, but let's leave those problems and, and look at a wider 
uh, Cape. And, and, and look at it now. And look at the Isuku youth. Um, do, do you feel that togetherness still does exist there? Uh, because that's the point of our discussion. Do you feel they are, do have one voice? Because there's always this belief that if you have different voices and you're not united in your stand, most certainly development will never come. Because in divided DC, you form a united, united stand. stand. So let's look at it and look at, because before now we've had challenges of having different youth body all in different wing, speaking with different tune and a different sound. But do you feel the Isoko youths are now together as one body? Um, uh, yes, the, the, the division exists okay. uh, or existed before um, my emergence and okay. of course the current... Um, um, leadership. Yeah. Um, let's look at the Isoko nation as a nation first. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Currently, the Isoko we have two local governments, mm -hmm. blessed with so many, so many natural resources, yeah. oil and gas. Yeah. We are the largest onshore producer mm -hmm. of crude yeah. in um, Nigeria, yeah. and um, also one of the largest onshore producer of gas yeah. in Nigeria. So yeah. it is viable. We have um, tertiary institutions there, yeah. and we have youths, a lot of them, that are very, very well schooled and trained. Okay. And um, mm. uh, from 1998, mm. uh, about under the um, leadership of Chief Fred Obe, uh, the, the East Soko people championed the cause for the Niger Delta emancipation. Yeah. And so um, a lot of uh, things have happened, a lot of growth has happened over the time. Um, but you now find that during the course of our development as a body right yeah. now, as a, a youth body, mm. um, there has been some uh, skirmishes of um, disagreement here and there, which do exist everywhere. Mm. And um, politicians, like they are, um, they are knowing the power of the youth, they want to get a whole or a part of the youth. Uh, the youth body to themselves and in instances where they are unable to get the leadership to do their bidding they want to either create theirs or see how to fragment it this is what we have witnessed over the the, the time I, I don't think it's peculiar you know really yeah, to the, totally Isoko, the Isoko uh, people yeah. it's a I think it's a it's, it's a nationwide thing okay. um, and so Yes, in Isoko, currently there are you know different um, youth bodies uh, mm. recognized by the state, as mm. it were. Uh, I would say sadly so. Uh, but then, uh, when it comes to issues that border on our people, when it comes to issues that border on the Isoko nation, a lot of times we have put our different umbrellas aside, mm. and we have come under the umbrella to champion to champion one umbrella to champion the cause of uh, the Isoko. And there are a lot of causes we're, we're championing. For example, um, we, we have been speaking in unison mm. over the um, non-inclusion of uh, Isoko um, youth in the non-violence phase of the okay. amnesty okay. Um, program run by the government. Mm. It is being, you know, the Isoko National Youth Assembly is calling for an inclusion, and of mm. course, other youth bodies are joining their voices. Mm. Um, even recently, um, uh, you know, we have also been championing the same cause for employment for our people, okay. because the goal really is a better life for our people, for those that we represent. So, yeah. irrespective of the, uh, the, the, the the toga, irrespective mm. of uh, your the nomenclature yeah. of your body, mm. it is to see the improvements, you know, of the welfare, the living standards of our people. people. We want our youth to be gainfully employed, especially in companies that we host. Yeah. We host a lot of oil multinationals. Um, and sadly, um, the, they, they have joined in taking advantage of uh, the, you know, the seeming division. Yeah. And so you now have that. We now realize that the division is even making us suffer the more because um, where you go to some of these <coughs> the headquarters, mm. you see uh, even though the resources for the sustainers of these companies, mm. the very oxygen upon which these companies breathe mm. is 
um, being is gotten from the yeah, Isoko land, uh, yeah. people have not really benefited, you know, from the natural resources that God has uh, mm -hmm. given them. So you go to their head offices, you go to all of the their stations, and you see people, youth from other ethnic nationalities, occupying real um, critical and uh, especially the graduate positions. And then you go to the Isoko, you see that our youth are giving surveillance jobs, you know, to hold cutlass and torchlights and bike and go to the bush to get the pipeline so this is one of the results of the division and that we ha we realize now and everybody is coming together to say no there has to be a stop to these things and the way to stop it is that we must be united in purpose we must be united in voice and we must be united in in destiny mm -hmm. uh, and this is what uh, we are i'm doing as the president of Isoko national youth assembly um talking with other youth bodies to say no enough of this and uh, we're looking forward to even we'll have a unity rally soon where everybody will come with one voice to say this is where we are we're defining our own pathway and we're going in that light well anyway our plan to we need to go on a light but rather we'll go on a break rather yeah. we need to take our commercials <laughs> this time and while we come back we'll continue our discussion looking at you togetherness especially when it comes confronting or challenging or dealing with issues that seems to confront them as a body and as a unity uh, but anyway how we can really unite and stand as one is basically what we're having on the show today let's go on a break i'll come back and have more discussion <laughs> 